because being a, a business owner, there's a lot of liability in it. Yeah. You know, you're always, you're, you're, I don't know if it's exactly true, but you're in theory always one lawsuit away from being out of business or one bad accident away from being out of business. And that's a lot of weight. I think especially as you grow and a lot of us small business owners, let's say 80 or 90% of your net worth is in this company. And so getting to take that off the table and not have so many of your eggs in that one basket and maybe diversify your investments and then take the risk out of it. So Tony, you know, one of the things that we want to get into with this is, you know, this is all about, you know, what does it look like to exit out of a business? Yeah. And so you've exited out of a business uh -huh. and now you're on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're in the the buying businesses yeah. side of it and you know, what's called acquisitions. Right. How did you get into acquisitions? Like how do you find yourself in that? I think I told you this story, but for the sake of everybody yeah, else. Yeah. The first company we bought, I was washing windows at a uh, on Southside Boulevard. It was an eye doctor and someone behind me like eh, eh, hey buddy what do you charge to clean the windows there i'm like oh, come on like leave me alone let me do my job mm -hmm. like you don't even want to be noticed when you're out there washing windows and i just ignored it and yeah. the guy like honks again hey hey you washing windows I'm like okay i gotta engage with this guy so i turn around there's this dude sitting in there in his suv and he's like how much do you charge to do the windows there and i'm like you know we don't really share our prices but Hope you're having a great day, sort of thing. He's like, no, I, I know I, I'm coming across wrong. What you, sh well, I'm messing the story up. He goes, what you should be charging is two dollars a window for those. And I was like, well, we don't charge two dollars a window. We charge one dollar a window. He's like, well, you're underselling yourself. It's like, okay, well, thanks for the advice, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, and then he does the whole. I, I'm coming across wrong. Here's why I'm talking to you. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> I have a window washing business business he had thirteen thousand dollars a year with account he's like i've got to get out of town do you want to buy my accounts and so i'm like what do you want for them no like, give me two or three grand and you can have my 13 grand a year worth of accounts so call my brother up we want to give him this, this guy three grand and he's like sure like that's the risk it's three grand and in the year we'll make it you know we'll make it back in three yeah. months so we bought his company busy b window cleaning and that was our first and we went around with him to his couple dozen customers he introduced us we kept those customers for years so maybe we did 60 grand worth of work off yeah. his customers off the three grand investment over the course of the years so we're like that was easier than knocking on a door and asking someone to wash their windows to get 13 grand worth of accounts usually that would take me a few weeks to go knock on doors right i like buying accounts so then we started doing that and that was Gosh, in 02 or 03, we bought that first one. And then we were like, this is a meaningful way to grow a company. Let's start calling our competitors. So the next one, I was in a venture landing, and there, <laughs> there were a couple guys there. I, I was doing the windows in a venture landing. There were a couple guys with Heights window cleaning T-shirts mm -hmm. on. And uh, I was like, hey, guys. Um, what are you doing here? And they're like, oh, we're on our lunch break. Don't tell our boss. Like, we shouldn't be here. We should be somewhere else working. I was like, well, I handed them a card. And I was like, hey, give your boss my card if you would. And if he's interested in selling ever, like, I'd be interested in talking to him. So they did. And this guy called me up. He's like, yeah, I do want to sell my account. So we bought that company. Those two guys who were sloughing off on the job, they, uh, they ended up becoming our employees and, <laughs> and they still sloughed off on the job. So they didn't last very long. We weren't, <laughs> we weren't up for keeping lazy people around. So anyways, that's, that was the short story of getting into acquisitions. And I liked it. I liked the whole trans, the transaction, the transition, the taking a business owner and mm -hmm. helping them buy out. And those were, it was 20 years ago. So those, I guess were more the cowboy days of buying companies where, People were selling for two months revenue, three months revenue, something like that. Not, they wanted to get out. They were done. They were burned out. And so business acquisition in the service world has evolved a lot since then. But that was my first like foray or taste of business acquisitions. And we went on to buy 
I bought 17 or 18 different companies mm -hmm. over the next 20 years and grew up, brought them all into our brand, which was Crystal Clean in Jacksonville, Florida. And uh, so, so that was business acquisitions initially in my experience. And then got to be on the flip side of that, selling the company, um, being approached, someone wanting our company. We had never thought about selling. So you guys had no, that was just a kind of like an out of left field thing for you guys. You guys were just running your company, growing it. That's right. And somebody said, have you thought about selling it? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Someone called up. It wasn't just one person, like a bunch of people one year. It was probably five or six years ago. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, for whatever reason, the private equity group started looking at service companies and they started looking at uh, pressure cleaning and window washing companies specifically. So they called us, called my brother and uh, said, we'd like to buy your company. And he's like, oh, we're not really interested. And they threw out like a number they would a multiple of what they would give on our earnings. And he's like, ah, no thanks. And so, you know, time went on, he brought it up to me. It's like, oh, I wonder what someone would pay for our company. So mm -hmm. got a couple more calls and then one of them, he's like, hey, people want to come down here from New Jersey and meet us and talk about this. I'm like, well, that's interesting. We'd go have lunch with guys that want, I mean, what harm could there be in doing yeah. that? So we went and sat down with these guys and uh, we liked them fine and uh they kind of gave the presentation and we were like mm, we think we're going to keep going and keep growing this thing you know the offer wasn't enticing enough um and then a year or two went by and those same guys probably a year went by they gave us a call and they were like hey we're willing to maybe up the offer we had grown so the 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 number the bottom line number had grown so mm -hmm. you know we knew we were worth more than the original offer anyways and they threw out a number and sounded appealing at that point. So we started the whole process of going through auditing, looking at our books, analyzing financials, and walking through more of a formal acquisition process, which is the first time we had gone through that formal of an acquisition process. So learned a lot in that. And then uh, we sold to them. And uh, we sold to them, and we had a one year kind of earn out. So we got. I think 50% of our money at the time of the transaction when they bought us. And then we had to produce so much revenue in a year's time to get the second amount or it, the second amount varied on um, what numbers we produced in the first and the year they owned us. So mm -hmm. did that one year earn out, grew our number. Fortunately, we had to go through the COVID shutdown happened during that oh, wow. year, which was terrifying because we were out like we're trying to hit this top line number and we're cleaning the campus for johnson and johnson they call us and they're like hey we're shutting down everybody's got to get off our site we are cleaning anheuser bush's campus they called us up pressure washing their whole campus here in jacksonville they called us up you got to get off our site so we're trying to hit this top line number and all of a sudden all our cust all our work is shutting down so we're like Oh brother, like this is yeah. gonna be ugly. And we had done some work for hospitals, mm -hmm. but not a lot. And then we we started calling on those hospitals because they were still doing disinfecting and cleaning. And so through accounts, we were able to pull in and we hit our top line number, which was I lost a lot of hair that year. But <laughs> <laughs> it was it was pretty nerve wracking, and I didn't think up until you know, a month or two before we hit it that we were going to. And so yeah. there was all the stress that kind of came wow. with that. But uh, I hadn't heard that part of the story before. Yeah. Yeah. That was a, that was a little nerve wracking. But anyways, so I left for five months, went and lived in an RV with my family, checked off a bucket list, being able to do that. Yeah. And then we went and saw national parks and state parks, saw 22 states and created a lot of good memories with the kids. Yeah. And uh, that was good. And then got back here to Jacksonville, Florida. My wife's grandma, uh, she moved in with us because she was starting to fail health wise. And so uh, the guys that bought us came back and asked if I was willing to get into the whole acquisition world. That sounded interesting after having done whatever 17 or 18 transactions. So the last two, three years I've been doing acquisitions with them and learned a lot, learned a lot of the process and been enjoying it. What was the process like for you coming out on the other side? Was it like everything you hoped it'd be? Was it 
pretty exciting and invigorating to like, you know, you got to, so, I mean, your earn out period was certainly um, exciting. <laughs> <laughs> but like kind of getting to the other side and like, you know, you, you get the rest of the payment and you guys ride off into the sunset. I mean, yeah. What was that like? That's an interesting question. Um, I'm not sure what it was like. It was, you're, I remember that story of the guy that won the decathlon. I think it was in Barcelona that he was like the world's greatest athlete. Okay. Fellow. And he was like, after I, he worked his whole life to win the gold medal and he won the gold medal. Mm -hmm. And the next day was the worst day of his life because now his like purpose or his goal was gone and that's mm -hmm. what he had lived his whole life for. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's just different. You went, I, I mean, I, my brother and I had been our only bosses other than our customers for 20 years. And now what was that experience like? I think the RV trip was a great experience to kind of reset mm -hmm. and find a little bit of purpose and meaning after the transition, the year was stressful largely due to COVID and the shutdowns and trying to hit a number. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, the transition of going from being your own boss, supposedly to, you know, someone else's you're answering to is a little different. I think one part of it that was immediately tangibly a relief was I was the safety and uh, I did the OSHA reporting and work comp and safety programs and all that for a number of years. And when I got the packet from the company that bought us and it was like, if there's an accident on the job, you call Lorraine. I was like, thank you, Lord. You don't call me anymore. <laughs> like, it's not on my watch because being a, a business owner, there's a lot of liability in it. Yeah. You know, you're always, you're, you're, I don't know if it's exactly true, but you're, in theory, always one lawsuit away from being out of business or one bad accident away from being out of business. And that's a lot of weight, I think, especially as you grow. And a lot of us small business owners, let's say 80 or 90 percent of your net worth is in this company. And so getting to take that off the table and not have so many of your eggs in that one basket and maybe diversify your investments and then mm -hmm. take the risk out of it. So if something happens to that company, a COVID type of moment mm -hmm. where that didn't take us out, but it took a lot of businesses out. And there are those kind of, we had gone through the recession, like the 2008, mm -hmm. 2009 recession and 2009 was bloody for us. Like we just bled cash and almost went bankrupt in that period yeah. of time. So going through those like tough business cycles, every business has probably has some type of tough business cycle they have to go through. And uh, I think after 20 years, maybe I had lost my stomach for going through that type of cycle with another company. So I, I think it's a mixed bag for everybody. That transition will be a little bit different. Um, it's important to me when I'm talking to anyone that might want to sell that it's the right timing for them. Like some people, it's a good time to sell and some people it's not. And it's good for them to know where they want to be and when they want to sell um, to have a meaningful discussion about that. So it's very personal to each person. Like the answer to that question is very personal. And so that's part of what I like about what I do in this job is I have these conversations with business owners and I talk to them about that. Like, what does your exit strategy look like and why does it look like that? And what's the next step for you? And uh, it, it's, it's custom to every person. Some yeah. person may have been in it for 20 years and they're done. Some people, so, we can go through so many scenarios of, you know, what could it be? But every single scenario I will say has been different for every person. And that's kind of okay. fun navigating that with them. Okay. Yeah. What is, so I'm just curious, yeah. I have no idea how you're going to answer this. Huh. What is your most and least favorite thing about being in acquisitions? My favorite thing, I'll start with the positive of okay. acquisitions, is finding a win-win for the, the seller and the buyer. Mm -hmm. And letting a seller walk away when it was good timing for them, it 
was more money than they thought they were going to ever have. Uh, they're not walking away where a business is failing. They're walking away where it's succeeding and they got enough money to retire on, which is so different than what acquisitions look like 20 years ago. Like that's the best part of it for me and helping, helping walk through someone through that transition. I think the worst part of it, huh? I can think of one of the, um, one of the transactions that didn't go well. It was a guy who, his business was falling apart. His grandson had been stealing from him, like was mm -hmm. pocketing the money on the accounts and was bilking his grandpa. And so this guy's business was falling apart. He hadn't invested well throughout his life, so he needed the money and he made this fire sale to us. And uh, we ran it, it was, you know, a 40 or $50,000 a year business by the time we bought it had sunk from 150 down to about a $50,000 a year mm -hmm. business. And, uh, and this guy was in a place where he couldn't live on the money. He got paid. And so <laughs> he came back and started taking our accounts and he was 80 years old at this time. We didn't have the heart to go after this guy we like we realized he needed the money but he's taking all the accounts for that we had just bought from him and so it was it was not a good experience <laughs> that was the worst where a deal really just kind of fell apart and we wasted the money and uh i don't know what i would do different approaching that situation like it was a sad story from start to finish yeah so Sad stories are sad stories either way, no matter what side sure. I guess you're, you're on on them. Yeah, I imagine, and again, I'm not putting words in your mouth and you don't even have to answer this, but I would imagine at this stage or maybe even when you guys were growing and you were buying more like distressed smaller businesses, yeah, that it has to be kind of disappointing when somebody comes to you and they're like, they really want to sell their business, but it's just not something that you can buy. Yeah. Yeah, that is tough to say, you know, thanks, but no thanks. And we've looked at everything you've just shown us and we've decided that your business is worth nothing to us. Like that's, there are hard conversations in yeah. anything, sure. but I think on the flip side of that, I've had those kind of conversations with people that you also, you got to look at their business and you saw the guts of it and you're like, here's why you're not appealing to us as a company. Yeah. But here are some things you could do to be appealing to us or some other buyer. And there are lots of, maybe you are appealing to another buyer and maybe you can make some changes in the next year that make you more valuable. And we have had situations where that happens. And a year later, we look at the company and they did the two or three things we said that would make a difference. And now they are, now they just doubled in size, their profitability grew, they were a viable company. And so that's fun to take someone you know, to that place where they're not really marketable and now they are. Do you ever kind of come into the flip side of that situation and you guys talk with a seller and you're able to come back to them with a number that is exceeding what they maybe had expected and they're kind of surprised or like, I didn't know my company was, was that valuable. That's a great feeling. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, that has happened. Yeah, where the offer that we made was like, their eyes get big and they're like, oh, I didn't, I didn't think it was gonna go there. Yeah. But uh, some of that has kind of gone away because there's there are a lot of buyers, there are a lot of people buying these type of companies mm -hmm. right now, and most service business owners, I would say probably most of them that are a million dollars or more, are probably getting one or two calls a month right now saying, hey, do you want to sell your company? And so there's a general knowledge in the market that there's an appetite for it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these people are talking, you know, they're going to the conventions, they're on the forums, they're learning about it. And so I'd say now people are generally more educated on it and they know there's more of an appetite for their companies than say 10 years ago. Yeah. I, um, I, I, I guess, I guess it definitely varies across the board on, I wonder how educated the market is and I wonder those kinds of things. You know, I, I talked with um, somebody that we're actually going to do an interview with. Okay. And, uh, you know, he said, you know, 
he said, I think people selling their business is something a lot of small business owners talk about, but not a lot of them successfully. Yeah. Uh, experience. Yeah. And, uh, you know, my, my belief is that that's because of a lack of education about what it's going to take to get to the point where you can successfully experience yeah. that. So, um, I would agree. I, I think that's, I think that's really cool. You know, the thing, and I'll just kind of share my perspective on you, Tony. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, one of the reasons that I want to do this with you, that I want us to have this, taking this content and, and exposing it to mm-hmm. more people and, and exposing what you're doing to more people is I've seen the way that you care about other business owners. Mm. And, you know, I've, I've seen in what you're doing that there's a real joy in helping other people win. Yeah. You know, um, it's, it's not a transactional thing. Yeah. for you and I, that's been very apparent in in our interactions and, and in what cool. we've done and i i think good that that's i think that's really cool Thank and you. i i think that going through this process yeah there might be people looking but there's a huge value to having somebody on your team if yeah. you will who has your best interest at heart yeah who's not just trying to do everything they can to get you to the closing table yeah so you know i admire that about you And in these next parts that we're going to have, the next questions, we're going to talk about, you know, how do we get to evaluation in a company? Like, what does that look like and what can you expect? Like, what are they basing the value off of? Um, How do you, how do you make yourself more attractive? Because I know that being able to give advice around like some things you might be able to do that make it more attractive. Like, what are you, what are you looking at and some of those things? So that's what we're kind of going to get to. I did want to stop and like share a little bit about your story and, and one, you know, wh- why you're qualified, why I think people should, should listen. Cause I'm just over here, like asking the questions and you know, I'm, I'm the, I'm the pretty one with the smile. Definitely. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but yeah, so stay tuned with that. And, uh, I think the next thing we want to talk about is a little bit about that, that value stuff. So. Yeah.